Hey, welcome back to the podcast. I'm Kevin Powell. I got a very special guest with me. It is one of the founding members of the Trans Siberian Orchestra. I'm talking to Jeff Plate. Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Kevin. How are you? I'm great. So you're up in New York, you're having fun, and you're getting ready for this big, big, big tour that's coming up. Well, I think it's what a hundred uh shows in 60 days or something like that. Yes, and, and to clarify that, we have we have two different touring groups. We have an East Coast and a West Coast group. Oh, my we've, goodness. Uh, we, we've been touring this way since the year 2000. Um, we started touring in 1999, and it was, a, it was just a trial show, trial run, I should say, of seven shows. And the following year, we were offered 70 shows. So we were still at the time <laughs> trying to do this tour between Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve. And Paul O'Neill, our manager, our, our producer, creator, he, uh, him and his team decided, let's, let's split the original cast in two. And we'll fill out the rest of the, the band accordingly. And this is how we've been rolling ever since 2000. And this is the way we can cover the country in this short amount of time, do all of these shows and play to all these people, you know, and little, literally over just a little over seven weeks. But, uh, but nonetheless... It is a it is a grueling <laughs> tour. We, we basically do eight shows in five days every week, and uh, like I said, this is the way we've been doing this for a long time. So we are we are all prepared for it. That's good, and fans love it too. I mean, you guys sell out all the time. Tickets are going right now. And I'm talking about the Trans Siberian Orchestra, the Ghosts of Christmas Eve, Best of TSO, and more. A lot of shows, a lot of dates. What kind of prep work goes into this? Take me behind the scenes. What's going into this? Well, at this point in the game, I mean. Myself personally have been here from the very first note. So, yeah. you know, there's a number of us that have been here for a long time. So we've all played most of this music in these shows at some point over the last 23 years. Uh, bringing, bringing the music up to speed actually comes, comes around fairly quickly. You know, okay. everybody shows up prepared. Um, we are always given a list of songs to, to, to be ready to try in rehearsals. The main, the main part of the rehearsals is the production, you know, and getting on the stage, coordinating with the light show, coordinating with lasers and pyro and all that stuff. That is where the real, the real, you know, work comes in, so to speak. But, but nonetheless, everybody does their homework. You know, we show up, we, we have a limited amount of time to do these rehearsals. We get in there, we get the job done and we get on the main stage and, and, and make the show happen. So that's, you know, a huge, credit to our production team and management team too for being able to coordinate all of this and, and get it get it going get it synced up and then getting it on the road now i haven't been uh, fortunate enough to make it out to a tso show myself i've seen it online i've seen the live shows online i've seen you know things online but you know talk to me what what can people expect going into this show in comparison to previous shows? Uh, someone that's never been to a TSO show before, what can they expect walking in? You know, I'm asked this all the time. And for people that have never seen us, for people that have seen us before, you know what to expect. <laughs> um, and if you have seen us before, you see a different show every year. So it's, it's never the same thing. Uh, for those that have never seen us before, you know, when you lay out all these elements of the show on paper, and it, it's like, it almost doesn't make sense. You know? <laughs> it's holiday music. There's a story, there's a narrator, there's lasers, there's fire, there's, you know, this, it's people flying in the air. It, it just, there's so much going on in the show. And I, my answer is just come see it because there honestly is something in this show for everybody. If you've never heard a note of our music before, you will recognize a number of the classic holiday themes that Paul O'Neill wove in and out of his original pieces of music and his stories, you will recognize a number of classical music themes done the same way. And this was, this was Paul's style. You know, he took some very tried and true, very recognizable melodies and made them part of his own, his own work. So there's going to be something recognizable in the show. And I'll tell you, at this point in the game, 
I'm sure most everybody has heard TSO somehow or another, whether oh, yeah. on radio or on commercial, on television. You know, during the holidays, we are all over the place. So the show is not just music in a story, but the band is phenomenal. We have we have like a dozen amazing singers on each tour. And I was talking about the production. The, the production is second to none. It really is probably one of the most unique shows you will ever see. But all in all, there is really something here for everybody. Whatever style of music you enjoy, there's something in this show for you. And this was exactly how Paul O'Neill designed it. A lot of people that come to these shows, you have a younger crowd that's into like the rock and metal. And yeah, you have a little bit of the older crowd as well. That's into like, you know, the big show pieces, the orchestral stuff and all that. And it's a nice blend. You could see families come out to this stuff and it's, it's a nice time for uh, everyone all around. Right. Absolutely. And this is, this is really why TSO has become so popular. It, it is a family show. It's, it's an everybody show. And I think this is, I mean, I remember the, the first show that we did in 99, at the Tower Theater in Philadelphia. We we come from the band Sabotage. And, you know, here we are, some, some progressive metalers, rockers, walking on stage to do a holiday show wearing tuxedos and just wondering, how is this going to work? And to look in the audience, since you saw families, you saw people with metal shirts on, you saw black <laughs> long-haired, black T-shirts, long hair, there was a couple sitting in the front row that were dressed to the nines. And I, and I, I swear they were there to see an orchestra and my bass player, Johnny Middleton and I looked at each other and we just thought, Oh my God, we're doomed. <laughs> but they loved the show and nobody left. And, it, and it's been that way ever since. So here again, a testament to Paul O'Neill and his vision for this thing was to create something for everybody and not just musically, but the story, the story is something that really it's the glue that holds the whole thing together. And I think it's really what brought people in once they realized, you know, this is a family show. There's, there's something here for all of us, our kids, our grandparents, everybody in between. So once word of mouth got out, this thing just continued to grow. And I mean, here we are all these years later and it, it's still growing. So you were one of the original founding members. You're the drummer. Uh, what kind of <laughs> conversation was it back in the day to go, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do an orchestra with metal and rock, and we'll see kind of what happens. How did that conversation start? Do you remember that? Well, so so my involvement, I began working with Paul O'Neill and the band Sabotage in 1994. So the first studio album that I did with Sabotage was called Dead Winter Dead. This was 1995. Paul had written a concept story about the war going on in Bosnia at the time. And centered in this story was this cellist who used to sit in the rubble and play his cello in memoriam of all the people that have died and you know all the, the misery his country was going through paul was just so affected by this whole situation and so here again i'm the new guy and i just kind of <laughs> stood back and watched and listened nonetheless if you listen to some of the older sabotage music you can hear kind of what paul o'neill was developing even before TSO became a reality. Um, there are some, definitely some hints of this on the Sabotage record, gutter, gutter Ballet, Streets, you know, even Edge of Thorns. Um, and this record was an extension of that. But nonetheless, it was a little odd instrumental song on this record. And... There was also no denying that when we heard the final version of the song, how powerful it was, you know, mm -hmm. it was awesome. So, mm -hmm. you know, this was, this was something that Paul O'Neill and John Oliva, this was their, their baby. This was their decision. And we went, we went ahead with it. Um, nonetheless, we all kind of scratched our head, but Paul was <laughs> convinced to do this. And when the dead winter dead record was released, Christmas Eve, Sarajevo 1224 just took off in a completely different direction. This is the vehicle that Paul used to create the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And here again, like I mentioned, you can, you can hear earlier hints of, of what he was thinking on the Sabotage records. But Paul, I mean, years before I ever even met Paul, he was scheming. He was coming up with, with these <laughs> ideas. He wanted to form a band that was going to be TSO. And this song allowed him to do that. And, you know, here we are. The rest is history. 
Yeah. How many years has it been? 20, 25, 30, and you guys are still going strong. Again, selling out a lot of these arenas, a lot of these places. You're playing over 100 concerts in 60 cities in just over 45 days. Just hearing that makes you go, man, how do these guys do it? But you guys have great prep work, like we mentioned earlier, and you got a whole team behind you. Um, So I'm going to try to catch you guys in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's what I'm going to be trying to do uh, this this season. And I'm talking to Jeff Plate. He is the drummer and one of the original members of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. We're talking about the Ghosts of Christmas Eve, the best of TSO, and more. One cool thing I want to mention is charity. You guys you know, give the charity all the time. You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, this was something that, that Paul instituted from the very first ticket that we ever sold. Uh, you know, Paul and his family, just super, super generous people, super, super nice and caring. And Paul felt that this was, you know, a small token of our appreciation for being able to play in these cities. And it was also, it was also a way for the audience to, to be directly involved in helping out their community and possibly helping out somebody that they even know. So we've, over the years, we have donated to the Salvation Army, children's hospitals, food banks, uh, zoos, you know, a number of other charities. But to date, we've donated over $18 million. And, you know, it's something that we're very, very proud of. It's like when you sit back and look at that number, it just makes you feel good knowing that you, you, you've been helping people out. and. This was this was Paul. You know, if you read his lyrics and, and follow his stories in his writings, he was all about hope, you know, and, and trying to do the right thing for people. And this is just an extension of that. But but yeah, 18 million dollars. I mean, something we're proud of. Well, we're going to continue to do it. And, you know, let's get this thing over 20. Over 20. All right. A couple more questions for you. Just as a musician myself, I got to know, what is your favorite moment? of the whole orchestra, of the whole show? Is it when you walk up on stage and see all these people? Is it at the end when you're taking a bow? What's your favorite moment? Well, you know, I, I could I could cop out and say all of the above. You know, honestly, <laughs> when we put, when we play Christmas Eve Sarajevo, the room is electrified, you know, because like I mentioned earlier, if you've never seen us before, you will recognize that Carol of the Bells melody. Oh, yeah. You know, that God rest you merry gentleman melody. And then you may even recognize that song that you've been listening to for the past X amount of years that you didn't even know who it was. Now, here we are playing it on stage. People just light up. You know, and when we play that song, it gets the best reaction of, of, of the evening. It just energizes the whole room. And if you weren't already brought into our story and our show, you are at that point. And I, I kind of, uh, out of curiosity, was thinking last year we were talking on the bus. I think I've played that song probably 2,500 times between <laughs> rehearsals and preparation and doing the shows. But still, I never get tired of it. It really just is one of the most awesome parts of the show. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, last thing for you. Do you have anything you want to say to fans as we wrap things up? Um, yeah, in general, I mean, thank you all for the support. It's just been amazing what we've, what we've been able to accomplish. I mean, Paul O'Neill had this vision and I give that man all the credit in the world. He, he put endless amounts of energy and time into making TSO a success. He was totally 100% committed to it. You know, he would not give up. And the fact that we've been able to to tour now successfully since 1999 uh, is a testament to what Paul created. But nonetheless, people, a lot of this is word of mouth. You know, we, we have a small window of time where TSO is very, very popular. And then there's the rest of the year where, where we're not. But the fan base just telling their friends, telling their family members, bringing them to shows, turning, this, turning them on to us. There's a group of people that, that every year they intentionally bring somebody new just to turn them on to this TSO thing that they love. So, you know, it sounds cliche, but without the fans, we would not be here. But, I mean, it, it couldn't be more tr- true. This is something that, I mean, I, I still remember myself being a kid thinking of doing this, being in a band like this. Oh, yeah. And here I am. I've been in the middle of one of the biggest productions, one of the most successful touring groups, you know, ever. 
and all of the above. But the fans, thank you for coming out and supporting us. And, and please stay safe. We're, we're not out of the woods yet with this with this COVID thing. So everybody just, you know, be sharp out there and, and stay healthy. And we'll see you soon. Absolutely. Jeff, thank you so much for taking a minute talking to me today. So that was Jeff Plate, one of the original founding members and drummer of the Trey and Siberian Orchestra. We're talking about the Ghosts of Christmas Eve, the best of TSO and more. Tickets are on sale right now and they are going to start next month in November. I'm checking them out at PPG Paints Arena in Pittsburgh. If you're going, let me know. And if I see Jeff, I'm definitely going to wave to him and say hi. Anyways, you can get tickets over at trans-siberian.com. Get your tickets. Bring the family. Bring some fun. You know, it's a fun time. So thanks again for checking out the podcast. We'll see you guys next time.